Hello guys, I hope you are doing great. The long-awaited code interpreter from OpenAI is finally here. It is an experimental chat GPT model that can use Python handle uploads and downloads, right? So they have mentioned everything here. I will provide the link in the description. But the main thing here is that it can solve the mathematical problems, both quantitative and qualitative, doing data analysis and visualizations, converting files between different formats. This is just some of the useful cases, but it can do lots of things. Chat with the documents has been one of the key talk, right? There are many videos, there are many blogs and articles related to that. And this code interpreter has taken that into the next level. So in this video, I will go through different examples, starting from data analysis. And the next, I will also do some code understanding and improvement kind of things. And then we'll create the QR code. That is one of the examples provided by ChatGPT. And then other different things. Let's get started. Okay, I am on the chat.openai.com website. And if you, as you can see here, now I have upgraded to the ChatGPT+. I was just using the ChatGPT free version before, but seeing code interpreter videos and tutorials or articles from different people, I was actually tempted to use it. So I upgraded to the ChatGPT+. Once you are in the ChatGPT+, it does not show automatically here the code interpreter. What you need to do first, you need to go to the sidebar and in the three dots, you need to go to the settings and in the beta features, you need to enable the code interpreter. Once this is enabled, it will be shown here. But one thing before I go there, there is this data control, right? So if you don't want the, the data that you are using in the chat GPT to be used as a training, you need to disable this. I'm not going to provide any sensitive information right now. So I'm just keeping it on, but it's up to you if you want to enable this or disable this, right? If I go here, there is this code interpreter shown here. I need to click this code interpreter. If you notice, once I click this code interpreter, let me close this, the plus icon appears here. And if you click this plus icon, you can upload a different documents or whatever you want, right? That's how it works. And you can start having the conversation with uh, chat GPT. Let's first go through the data analysis part. What I did was just uploaded this movie statistics CSV file. So I took this from the Kaggle website. As you can see here, the ultimate film statistics data set for machine learning, right? So you can just go through this. I will provide the link if you want to go more into it. But we are going to ask what the data set is for code interpreter, right? So if I go back here, I just said explain the data. So that's what I provided and then it went and did some work. And by the way, if you want to see what it does behind the scene, you can click this show work icon here and then it will show you the code that it went in order to produce the result for you, right? Here it says that the uploaded data seems to be a data set about movies and it provided all the different columns here. Yeah, that's that's how it is going to work. and. The main thing here now is just the prompt, right? As many people are saying that English is the new programming language. Now you can just ask as many questions you want to ask into this code interpreter and it is going to provide the answer for you. And then I asked, can you explore trends in the film industry with some charts, right? It said that it can also produce some visuals. It went and did some work and then it provides me some of the visuals. As you can see here, it says average production budget each year and number of movies produced each year, right? Average movie ratings each year and average worldwide gross each year. And if you want to see the code, as I said before, you can just click this and there is all the different code that it take into consideration to create this. It explains what it is happening behind the scene, right? The generated plots provide a high level overview of some trends in the film industry. I'm not going to go through that you get the idea that it first writes the code and then it creates the plot and explain what is happening in the plots. Can you provide three more ways to visualize the data, right? Going through the data is a challenging part. And I just ask it the three questions and it says here, okay, distribution of movie ratings, distribution of movie runtime, and then the production budget versus all wide gross, right? So it provided different charts. Just to see here, it provides the bar chart and also the scatter plot, right? And as always, as I said before, if you want to go through the code, 
you can just click this part here and I want to go one level up right because I want to do some machine learning stops. What I did here is can you train, test and predict a logistic regression model out of this data set right. This is just the one prompt that I provided to it and then it says sure in order to build a logistic regression model we need to define a binary outcome two possible values as a target variable. I was just trying to test what it will do right and it knows that there is no target variable. So what it does it actually creates a target variable and then it provides what is happening and what it is doing inside here right and there is the code here as you can see here it takes a scale on and then it says D of high ratings as a target variable and it creates the target variable here. And then there is the X, Y data and it did some standard scalar, like standardized the features, it split the data into training and test and train the logistic regression model and then it fits that X train and Y train. It did some prediction and there is the classification report also being provided to us. And yeah, that's all and it explains all the stuff that it is doing behind the scene as we go. This is quite impressive and you can go beyond this and try many things but just to give you the glimpse of what it is capable of in data analysis, I think this is really impressive and many people are going to find it helpful. Okay, next let's go through understanding the code and improving the code part, right? I just ask it to explain the code by providing one of the Jupyter notebook from my GitHub repository and it says that okay I'm sorry for any confusion but an AI model developed by OpenAI with the current date of July 11, 2023, I don't have direct access to the internet so it cannot provide me the information. However, I can help you with the Python code, SQL code or concepts related to them, right? And then what I did was I just downloaded the code and then I uploaded the IPython notebook and said explain the code for me, right? And then it, it did something here. As you can see, if you just click it, it did some work we using Python and the provided Jupyter notebook appears to be using Langchain package to interact with the SQL database, right? This is the SQL chain ipython notebook that i used to create my another youtube video so yeah it explains each and everything here so here is a breakdown of what each part of the code does right there is installation and the setup there is the database model setup and all the different things as you can see here it goes step by step and this is really helpful for anyone right who is experienced in coding also if you want to know what other code is doing you can just ask chat GPT or code interpreter and it explains you and this is really helpful for the beginners or who don't even know the code right if you want to know what is happening you can just ask here and it provides the step by step explanation what is happening that was the Jupyter notebook and I, I want to also ask it something related to the python code now I said explain the python code and langchain falcon pi this is what I took from my uh, YouTube video also. So if you can see here, I just took from the Langchain Falcon chain lead and there is this Falcon Pi, right? So this is the Python file that I downloaded and I provided it to the code interpreter and it says here first apologies for the confusion there seems to be a hiccup with the code execution and then it again goes and said okay the Python script appears to be an AI assistant using Langchain a package which allows for generating language models using a chain of transformations right and then it explains all the different steps that is happening behind that Python code similar to what it did in the Jupyter notebook and then yeah it explains all the different things and I said can you provide some improvement suggestions in the code right this is helpful if you write some code and if you want if there is some improvements right it says here the code you have provided seems well structured and functional but here are a few potential improvements or additional considerations that could be made so it provides some improvements and the additional considerations and it says error handling is one that I could improve and there is logging, configuration management, code comments and function docking strings, test coverage, security and all the different things. So that is what it provides me some recommendations to implement in the code. That's good. Now what I can do is just say okay can you implement the improvement suggestions in this code right. I want code interpreter do some implements in my code now and it says sure let's implement some of the suggested improvements if you can see here now it's it somehow modified the code right and it says load environment variables dot env it just provides some 
comment here and then it implemented the try and accept here right just good enough and then it this is the normal things that is doing here and then this is prompt and it provides some of the doc strings for the def factory function and then it also explains what it implemented in that particular code right the retrieval of environment variables is wrapped in try accept block right and if the required environment variables are not found or descriptive error message is printed that's good and the doc string has been added to the factory function that's really good right and i said can you provide any visual representations of the python script and it says okay i can provide something and yeah here is the visual <laughs> I was quite surprised what I was just thinking, okay, what it will provide from the Python code, right? Then it says, okay, here is the start and the end, and there is the load environment variables, and if any variable not found, print error, right? And then it says set up language model with API, and then define the prompt template, define factory function, inside the function, create and uh, return the LLM instance. If we just provide this particular diagram or the visual representation of the flowchart, you will know what is happening behind the code right that is also quite impressive you can just copy this and paste in your readme file and people will know that okay what is happening in your particular code that's also good now let's go and do some image processing using code interpreter right what i did first was created a random image in leonardo ai and then provided that image and said can you explain what is in the image right it didn't actually succeeded here and it said that it cannot analyze the image so yeah, I asked two questions, can you provide any information you know? And it says, no, I don't know any information, right? And it says, if you could provide more context or specify what you are looking to learn about the image, I would be happy to assist further. I didn't went in that direction, but I said, can you convert the image to PNG? That was one of the thing that they have mentioned in the documentation that it can convert into different file formats. Here, although this is in the image, I just wanted to convert from JPEG to the PNG. So it succeeded the task and it provides me the random pick in the PNG format. And next, what I ask it is to convert that colored image into the black and white. And it went and then it provided me the black and white version of that particular image. Because before I provided the colored image and it converted it into the black and white. And you can click this and download the file. That's about the image processing, right? You can go through it and try your own versions. And one thing what I wanted to try is I want to create the QR code of my YouTube channel. That was one of the example. They say that, okay, it can create the QR code with just one prompt, right? I just wanted to give a try. And I said, can you create a QR code for this particular link, right? So that is the YouTube link of my YouTube channel and show it to me it first created the QR code, right? And then there is the link being provided for me to download, but then it's, it didn't provide me on the UI itself. And I said here, can you show the QR code in the UI itself instead of me downloading, right? And then it provided the QR code. And this is actually functional because I tried it and it opens my YouTube channel. This is really helpful for one who just want to have the QR code without knowing the code right if you want to know the code of course it is doing here behind the scene this is not the one but if you go here it is showing the code how it did to convert that particular url into the qr code but if you don't know any coding also you can just provide some random you and, and it provided the qr code for you next what i tried is uploading the jpeg file where i had the mathematical problems let me show you what i tried this is just the mathematical simple mathematical problem but it is in the jpeg format right what i tried here is can you solve the math problem i uploaded i expect it to read that particular jpeg file and then solve that mathematical problem but it says that it cannot do it right now i have seen some of the people showing that it is possible but for some reason it is not capable of doing here and i said read this image and solve the question if it if it solves it giving the different prompt and it still says that okay i'm sorry for any confusion but i cannot do it it said i don't have the capability to directly view or analyze the images this means i can't extract text or math problems directly from the images and then i just provided the question here and yeah it solved and provided the answer for me so yeah i think 
what you need to be careful here is providing the right prompt for the score interpreter in order to have the right answer but you can do the trial and error and find the right way for you to solve the problem so another random thing what i asked is to create the word cloud so this is this can be useful if you want to do some presentation or something right i said can you create a visual word cloud out of this csv file it just provided the uh, word cloud for me and before that what i did here is also can you explain what the csv file is in one paragraph right so it kind of summarizes all the different things in one paragraph these kind of things can be useful when you do some presentations or if you want to explain something to others what is that csv file and by just showing this one one paragraph here and with the word cloud you can explain many things right i did some of the experiments what i faced is sometimes the session just expires automatically and and the next thing what you need to consider is it is providing answer in python only right so i said here can you create the same word cloud using the javascript and it says creating a word cloud using javascript involves using libraries such as d3.js word cloud 2.js however i am currently operating in a python environment and am unable to execute the javascript code right whenever the code interpreter is running it is running in the python environment if you are some developer who is not familiar with the python then it might be a drawback for you or the limitation for you but it somehow provides the code here as you can see so that you can just copy the code and write it wherever you want right okay that's all for this video i hope you learned something new for me at least i tried i'm trying this code interpreter in different ways and i'm finding it helpful because just to do some quick prototyping or just to upload some data and finding insights out of it, it is really helpful let me know in the comment section in what kind of things you are using code interpreter to solve your problems yeah if you are new around here subscribe there are many videos in the pipeline so you might find it helpful thank you for watching and see you in the next video